Hello and welcome to Heilman and Hayward, the stage and screen podcast coming to you from Casa de Quinn and 1111 Studios in beautiful Port Orchard, Washington. I'm Greg Heilman. And I'm Matt Haver. We're two local actors looking to hone our craft by exploring the best in local theater and on the big screen. Each week we bring you entertainment news and views, celebrate classic Hollywood, enjoy cocktails with a Tinseltown twist, interview talented local actors and directors, and chat with industry experts from L.A. to the U.K. Welcome to episode 58. Today is Friday, March 11th, 2022, and tomorrow the state of Washington drops its indoor mask mandate. Hooray! (laughs) COVID is in retreat and spring is on the way, and it has been a crazy two years. But we've loved every minute we've been able to spend behind the mic getting to know some amazing guests and share those conversations with you, our audience. And today we have that chance again. In a few minutes, we'll be joined by Michelle Danner, acting coach to the likes of Selma Hayek, Seth MacFarlane, Gerard Butler, and Henry Cavill, a film and stage director, and also an author. Michelle's also directed and acted in over 30 plays and musicals in New York and L.A., so as a couple of community theater guys. We're anxious to learn from her and glad you're along with us. And we've been busy since last we joined you. Lots of Seattle shows, lots of reviews, a handful of video interviews, and of course, a new website where you can find all of that and more. HeilmanandHaver.com is officially online and is the headquarters for all of our audio and video segments, including nearly 60 podcast interviews, Get to Know a Theater and In the Mix episodes, all of my theater and film reviews, and so much more. That's right. Greg especially has been burning through the ink since episode 57 and in his spare time also got back on the boards in the role of Thomas Putnam in Arthur Miller's The Crucible. So go see him and a very talented cast of local favorites in an unforgettable show playing at Western Washington Center for the Arts in Port Orchard through March 20th. And of course, check out our blog for Greg's special five-part Crucible Diaries for a behind-the-curtain look at his experiences in this Pulitzer and Tony Award-winning play. And visit our video tab for a behind-the-scenes look at the upcoming Seattle Film Festival and interviews with Chris Sullivan, a.k.a. Shockwave, from Freestyle Love Supreme, and Shawnice Omar, understudy from the one-woman show Fanny, both recently on stage at the Seattle Rep. And playing now through April 3rd at the Rep, it's Teenage Dick, a satirical retelling of Shakespeare's Richard III set in 2010. You can find my review for Teenage Dick on our Film and Stage Reviews page on the new website. Well, whether you perform on stage or screen or most enjoy film or theater, our next guest is a literal treasure trove of wisdom and know-how. Michelle Danner is a legendary acting teacher and founder of the Creative Center for the Arts and the Los Angeles Acting Conservatory. She's also now a well-established and successful feature film director. Her film Bad Impulse, a psychological thriller about family secrets and modern technology, won Best Narrative Feature at the 2019 International Independent Film Awards and the Best Director Award at the 2019 Culver City Film Festival. Michelle's other film, The Runner, an action thriller and true-life coming-of-age story, has played at 28 festivals around the country and internationally. Danner won Best Director five times, including the Milan Gold Awards, the Montreal Independent Film Festival, and the Paris Play Film Festival. Raised in a show business family with a deep appreciation for all the performing arts, Danner also runs the boutique Cinema at the Edge Film Festival and recently directed a new one-person virtual play, Bonnie Culver's Norris, starring Anne Archer, based on the memoirs of the widow of writer Norman Mailer. A dedicated mom of two, one, an aspiring filmmaker, Danner still has her day job, overseeing the faculty of the Los Angeles Acting Conservatory and conducting her weekly acting class. Her list of students has included Christian Slater, Selma Hayek, Gerard Butler, Seth MacFarlane, Penelope Cruz, Chris Rock, Gabrielle Union, and Zoe Deschanel. A longtime student of legendary acting teachers like Stella Adler and Uta Hagen, Danner's eclectic approach, which she calls the Golden Box, allows actors the freedom to employ a wide variety of techniques. Michelle joins us from her home in L.A. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So, Michelle, a moment ago in your bio, we, we mentioned your eclectic approach to acting. When you were interviewed by Emmy Magazine a little while back, the article said, quote, if there is one rule to Danner's approach, it is that she embraces no single technique. And your website says you offer acting training in the method acting, Stella Adler, Stanislavski, and Meissner techniques, and scene study, and improvisation. That is a, a, a ton of different methods there. Uh, one usually thinks of acting schools as focused, usually quite dogmatically on just one of those. So can you tell us a little bit about the approach that you take with these multiple uh, methods? Well, you see, that's so interesting that you're asking me this because when I was a teenager and I was in New York studying with Stella Adler and with Uta Hagen and all those teachers, anytime a teacher became particularly dogmatic, that created a lot of rebellion in me and just made me want to just run out of the room. And I thought to myself, how can this be? You know, you, there's different ways when, you're, when, when it's art, 
it cannot just be one way. There's all different ways. And, you know, I, I just rebelled against the idea of this is the only way that you are to do this. And so therefore, you know, as I uh, started to teach and continue to be creative, directing movies, acting, I put together a toolbox that encompasses a lot of different philosophies of acting. As a matter of fact, I distinctly remember being on a plane on my way to Russia to teach. This was now about, I think, seven years ago. And they had put together a class of Russian actors, about 400 Russian actors, and all the famous ones were in the first few rows. And I remember reading in the plane, I brought all my Stanislavski books with me because I thought they're going to get me on something that I don't know. And sure enough, they, you know, it was very, very intense. It was five days of teaching, eight hour days. I was so intense. And, uh, but then I, I was on the plane and I started to reread Stanislavski and actor prepares and building the character. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. And I'm, I mean, it's not really a great translation, these Stanislavski books. And then I was, you know, I, I always go, go back to Stella Adler and I go back to Uta Hagen and I go back to Meisner and, and just, you know, everybody had valuable insights and all of them can be enormously helpful for an actor's toolbox. It's just a matter of being knowledgeable and reading what everybody else believes and getting the pearls, you know, of, of wisdom getting the little nuggets of gold that you know work best for your instrument, for who you are as an actor, because every actor has a uniqueness to them. So this idea of everybody come to the middle and be the same is something that I absolutely uh, detest. I think that uh, there's so many valuable, you know, tools that you can gather and use, depending on if you're working in front of the camera, depending if you're working, you know, late at night, if you work in a comedy, in a drama, whatever genre you're working on. And so um, I just think the actor needs to stay open and flexible and just keep being, you know, a student of life all the time, just keep learning and learning and learning. And I think that that's the best way to approach acting. Do you find that there's specific instances in which you apply a certain method or style? For example, you mentioned, you know, drama and things like that. Is there a certain type of role or or uh, character that might dictate one specific method or is it just that you're combining all these to develop your own specific style i think you're combining you know all of them you're taking from here you're taking from there you're taking from your experiences when you book a job you know when you're on set or on stage you take it from life you know um i'm working right now with a young actress she's really really young and she had a baby at a very young age but it's interesting because it really deepened her as an artist. And I see that she has that to bring to her work. Yeah, you, you know, it's life lessons. It's, you know, lessons when you work and, and all the lessons that you learn, you know, working in a class or with a coach or privately. Do you believe there's anything such as a, a natural actor? Is it possible for an actor to achieve professional success without some formal training? Is there a name for that sort of style? Just someone who steps into the world of acting and, and seems to just have a just have a knack for it? Absolutely. You know, I mean, there's a couple of things. You need, to, obviously, to have some sort of talent. You know, some ability needs to be there. But then Stella Adler used to say, and I always remembered that, you have to have a talent for the talent. And I've always loved that because what she meant is a lot of people are talented then you need the work ethic to go with it. You have to have the willingness to go past what's comfortable, to risk it in your work. And so, you know, the approach, in, and, and there are people that are just very natural, but then, you know, if you're challenging yourself and you're going to go do a Broadway show or you're going to do, you know, Shakespeare uh, on camera, or you're going to do something just very difficult, a very complex character, you are happy to have a craft, you know, the craft of acting. You're happy to have studied that. I call it in French, le métier, the métier of acting. And that's uh, really important that you, as an artist, know how to do the work, know how to bring your A game, you know, your choices, your riveting interpretation to the table. 
so that you can have fun because ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, you have to always remember that it has to be fun. When you teach a certain style of, of acting, does it um, also teach uh, the actor how to, I don't want to say interact, but re react, because acting is reacting. We always hear that, that phrase. Does that vary from, from style to, to style as well? Well, you're always, absolutely, you're always reacting, because if you're not reacting, then as you've heard, you're acting. So you have to react, you have to be affected, and that goes through every genre that you're going to work on. You're always going to be let the other person in, and you're going to do something to them, and you want them to react a certain way. And when they don't react a certain way, because usually they don't, because that's the obstacle in the scene, then that gives birth to something different that you're going to do to them. And based on, you know, how you feel about the other person and based on how they change, because people change all the time, you know, you keep reacting in different ways. So, yeah, those are always, that's always that, uh, you know, that, that triad, that those concepts, something happens, it makes you feel something. And because there's an obstacle, it always makes you do something to the other person. That is true, whether you are a method actor or whether you study Stella Adler, or whether you're an instinctual actor, those things will always be true. The toolbox that you referenced earlier, you actually refer to as your golden box technique. So uh, a, a bit of gold from each of these great instructors and teachers from the past. Could you give us a couple examples of something that you've taken from, say, a Meisner? One of the basic things that you've put into that, that golden box when you first started teaching it? Yes, well, you know, I was lucky enough to study with Stella, and she taught an extraordinary class called Script Interpretation. And it was really about digging deep into the script analysis and understanding the specifics and creating this life from your imagination, like using your imagination to the full extent. That always really stuck with me, you know, the permission, the green light, to just be as imaginative as you can be. You know, when I studied the, the Meisner technique, I studied in New York with a teacher called Bill Esper. And that was a wonderful experience. I also did a movement class with Lloyd Williamson back then. And I just, you know, particularly loved losing yourself, which is, you know, the, the basis of the Meisner technique is to be able to really live very truthfully under those imaginary circumstances and put your attention fully on the other person. And so that concept really, you know, stuck with me. And then I've always loved a quote that François Truffaut said, a French filmmaker, the more personal you make it, the more universal it becomes. And, you know, that very much is one of the foundations of the Strasbourg technique, you know. And so that stuck with me. And that is, you know, a little the tool also that goes into, you know, your own little golden box of tools. Because ultimately, like I said, Every actor is unique. And so, you know, a tool that will help one actor in this part, in this project, might not help another actor. And by also by the same token, it's something that could help you, you know, work very deeply with something, a memory, a personal memory that happened to you in one project. And then you're going through something that's not going to work for you in another project. So there's also a sensitivity to that. Nothing is ever the same. Everything moves, everything is different. Look at us now today with what's happening in the world. We're all sitting with anxiety, you know, we're, we're looking at what's happening. We're never ever the same. And, and that partly it's the beauty of creativity. You know, you can never say, you know, it's not like a, I start one of my acting classes by saying acting is not like a computer program that you can master. You can go, this is it. This is how you do it. This is, you know, no, you're, you'll always stay in that realm of, I don't know, of uncertainty. I'm, I'm discovering. And that makes it, that's why good actors are like the wonder child. You know, you're like children. You're always surprised. You always don't know what's going to happen. You're always in the service of discovery. And that's what's truly beautiful about it. I did want to ask you about separating the acting from your personal life, um, just in general. I, I saw an interview with the actor Brian Cox uh, from Succession, among many other things, and he was talking about one of his castmates, Jeremy Strong, who's a phenomenal actor, has won uh, a bunch of Emmys for, for his role, 
on that. But he said that he takes his character so that Jeremy takes his character so seriously that it's bled into his personal life and has caused a lot of conflict in that. That it's it's he's not able to separate it because his character is such a complex, you know, psychological character. How do you or what is your recommendation or suggestion to your students to be able to make that distinction between a role they're playing and their personal life? Well, first of all, let me just say that Succession is an incredible show. It's just, it's beyond brilliant. Uh, and Jeremy Strong gives an extraordinary performance. I mean, he's just, he's heartbreaking in that part. And, you know, I read, I read the, the article in the New Yorker and I'm just very familiar with the whole thing. I always say, listen, as deep as you have to go because it's your duty as an actor, you know, to pay homage to the character and make it come to life in the deepest way. The one thing you don't want to do is hurt yourself, you know, psychologically hurt other people in any way. With the SAG Awards, was it last week? Uh, you know, it was like at one point, I was like, oh, I don't see Jeremy Strong. But then he was, he was there, uh, you know, all dressed in, <laughs> in that wonderful uh, jacket that he had uh, and, and happy, you know. Um, listen, there's always drama behind the scenes, you know, whether you're a, a method actor, whether you go deep, you know, the, the sum of the character is it incestuous? Does it penetrate you? Yes, of course. Absolutely, of course. I was working with this actress, this famous actress, and we were working on a very difficult piece, and she was just, it was affecting her. Um, so, you know, actors are humans. This is the job. It's the mission impossible. You have to go to the place that nobody else wants to go to if you're going to do the job right. But I always say, you know, as long as at the end of the day, you know, you're not hurting yourself, you're not hurting anybody else. Okay, so maybe you're a little antisocial, you know, maybe, you know, you're not, uh, so what? You know, maybe that conflict is good. I mean, after all, it didn't hurt them, they're winning everything. Uh, <laughs> as long as he's not miserable and nobody else is miserable, I just love to watch great work. Speaking of winning everything, uh, your students are regularly represented at the Academy Awards, the Emmys, the Golden Globes, Tonys. Tell us about maybe a couple of your most memorable students, not necessarily your most famous or accomplished, but what are a couple of students that you've worked with that, that really stand out to you, uh, who you've really enjoyed working with, or maybe someone that you learned something from? Well, I have learned something from every single person that I have worked with who taught me something. And I have it on my list to write him a letter about it one day, as soon as I take a breath, is Chris Rock. He taught me something wonderful about parenting. I am the mother of two boys. And, um, and he, you know, said to me about allowing them, you know, to give them freedom to, to explore and find who they are. And I really, that, that, those ideas really spoke to me in terms of parenting. And it really helped me. And I have a fantastic relationship with my kids. As a matter of fact, they both want to come on set with me now that I'm going to go shoot something and, you know, we're just, we were all snowmobiling together last week in, in Lake Tahoe. And it was just, you know, the way he said it, and I was at the right place to, to hear it. That was a great piece of advice, you know, let it breathe. In the same way I always tell my actors to breathe, let the kids breathe and discover who they are and not pressure them and to do this and do that. And, you know, fill every moment of every day. So you're the most, you know, exceptional whatever. So I've, I've done the opposite of that. And it's really uh, served me really well. Um, you know, this kid that I had in my class, I mean, I, there's so many stories, we would be here till tomorrow. <laughs> but, um, you know, just because this is current, I have a movie, The Runner, that's going to come out in a few months that I shot and edited, you know, during uh, the pandemic. And uh, I had a student of mine, Edouard Filippona, quite wonderful, that was in my class and I saw, you know, that he was really perfect for this movie that I was, uh, I was writing the treatment and then gonna, I was gonna direct. And, um, you know, he turned out to give really a wonderful performance. We were lucky to have a, a great run on the festivals and win awards. And now we're gonna be distributed by Savant Films. And so, um, you know, the, the, and I, I've learned, I learned from everybody that I work with, everybody, uh, you know, gives me something and I try to give them something too. Well, speaking of the things that you give your students, 
what is one kind of tried and true piece of advice that you give to actors of of any level and then i'm also interested to see what you think a, a good piece of advice is for someone who might be just uh, in local theater but wants to take that next step into getting into the more professional ranks of either theater or film well i mean it's probably no surprise to you <laughs> that i would say study but i have to say that you know i studied when i was you know 15 16 i studied my whole life but if i were to go back and tell my younger self how to study i would tell her study better um go deeper watch things over and over again you know the part of me the defense mechanism in me that said i i watched that movie once and that's it i got it it was not my best friend and, uh, and on that note, I watched my, you know, my 19-year-old who goes to USC, who studies film and theater, watch 19 times the same movie. He watches this Korean horror movie and he starts to sob. And I'm thinking, I never watched a Korean horror movie that made me sob. <laughs> <laughs> he is just so passionate. And, and so I want to say, you know, stay ignited to the flame in you, to the passion in you. And I think if you're like little Draculas, you know, this is sucking blood and watching things and being inspired. I mean, I'm doing this now. I'm in prep right now for a movie that I'm going to shoot. And I am, it's a courtroom suspenseful drama and very unique because it's never been done. And, you know, the other night I watched, you know, uh, and A Few Good Men and The Accused and The Verdict. Oh my God, I completely forgot how, you know, Paul Newman, we just say Paul Newman hero of all heroes you know how he listens his inner life how rich all that is so that's what i would say you know study but study performances you know if you read the process you know i love when people give interviews actors directors writers and you you under you go what's your process how did you get there what did you do and I think everybody has a really good common denominator is that they, they study, not only do they study, but they study in depth. I imagine there's also some value. Now, we've spoken to Foley artists and composers and a number of people who contribute to filmmaking. And, and one of the things they've said as a kind of a common denominator is always have their eyes open, their ears open, looking for things because you never know what you're going to find, what you're going to hear. And I imagine it's the same way with, with studying acting when you're, you know, watching a film, looking for things that you can use. Is that what uh, what you found oh, as well? Yeah. I always say, you know, you start a little video library of all those moments, you know, so this is a great acting moment and, and, and understand why it is that. And I rewind the moment over and over again. So you're just really clear how you get to execute that. Um, you know, it's like, when people, you know, excel in comedy, Charlie Chaplin, there were those movies, like he did his routines hundreds of times, the repetition of that. That's what I mean also by going deeper. Yeah, preparation breeds courage. What, one question I have for you um, is that sometimes I feel guilty patterning my performances after someone I admire, or, or like you said, watching something so many times, I feel like I'm mimicking rather than I'm, you know, bringing something fresh to a role, something like that. Do you ever run into that? Do your students ever express that to you? I'm, I'm a little concerned that I'm going to be copying someone rather than interpreting. Absolutely. And I just, you know, say maybe you can shift the lens a little bit. You can just say that you're going to be inspired and you're not, you know, you just going to throw it into your mixer. I mean, nobody is you. That was, that's where the uniqueness comes in. Nobody's ever going to do it like you. You know, it's when people write and people say, well, it's been done before. Yeah, but you haven't done it. Right. Everything's been done, but not by you. Hmm. That's a good perspective. So now you wear a number of hats, Michelle. You're an accomplished actor and director in addition to the the teaching that you've done. Now how does your work behind and in front of the camera inform the way you teach? Well, I think that, yep, I have a front seat to what it's like to make a movie. And, uh, and I also understand, you know, what it takes. So I think, it, yes, it makes me uh, be able to contribute something to my teaching because I, although when I teach, I really don't teach like I direct. I'm more result-oriented when I direct because you don't have time. But when I teach, you know, it's more about process and it's more about empowering the actors that I work with 
to be independent because I'm not going to be with them on every set. So, um, you know, just to teach them how to make choices so that, you know, they can bring those, those tools in a trailer when they're breaking something down or working, you know, backstage of, of a theater. So, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, being, uh, being a film director, being a filmmaker has certainly helped me a lot to understand how to help actors in the classroom. So tell us what's on the horizon. You mentioned a couple of films and projects that you're working on. You got the news, what, two days ago about a brand new project you're heading back east to shoot. What is next on, well, first of all, how do folks get uh, information about your acting school? MichelleDanner.com, I believe? Yes, it's uh, Michelle Danner. Uh, <laughs> so funny, I wouldn't even know that. Michelle Danner <laughs> Acting Studio, Los Angeles Acting Studio.com, Instagram, Michelle Danner LA. Uh, you know, all we'll link all that stuff in our show notes, everybody. So, yeah, I just finished shooting the wonderful actress. We were working all throughout this pandemic and Archer, a play that we shot as virtual theater. It's called A Ticket to the Circus by Norris Church Mailer, the wife of Norman Mailer. And um, I was really excited about this project. Uh, Norman Mailer always fascinated me. I'm very good friends with his young son. John Buffalo Mailer, as a matter of fact, he wrote a screenplay that I ended up making uh, a movie of Hello Herman with Norman Reedus. So I, um, I just finished doing that. And in, in the midst of all of this, this extraordinary project just fell on me. And it's about the Miranda rights. You know, all these years I've watched in a million movies, people being read their rights, you have the right to be silent and you have the right to an attorney. And I never knew the story, and the story had never been done. So this is the, this wonderful, brave, courageous woman, Trish Weir, came forth with this story. And so it's a true story that we're telling. It's her story from her perspective. But this is a story that changed America, it changed the way, you know, Americans were arrested, for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary story. So when I saw that, it was offered to me on a Sunday, and I usually wait, you know, for my office to open on Monday, and then I'll answer all my emails, and I'm really good about that. I'm really organized. But that Sunday, I saw it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is right up my alley, because for all the slack that I have gotten throughout the years, because I'm the queen of watching all the datelines and 48 hours, <laughs> forensic files, and you name it, and I've watched it. I mean, I love all those crime shows. And then I see this. I'm like, well... I don't know if they know, but this is like right up my alley. So it's a suspense legal drama. I'm excited about it. And uh, we're going to shoot it. It's happening. Uh, we're going to shoot it at uh, the end of May in New Jersey and in Arizona, because that's where it happened. So we're kind of moving out-ish of COVID to a certain extent. So if you're, you're going to start to to film this, are there still, to your you know knowledge, going to be COVID protocols in place? with filming, testing, that sort of thing? I understand that there will be, but much less. And we're not shooting for two and a half months, two months and three weeks, something like that. So anything can happen, of course. <laughs> there could be more of a protocol or less. I obviously would like for it to be less. You know, wouldn't it be great? Because even when I was shooting Anne these past few weeks, it's painful. You know, I wear glasses to read because that's what happens when you get older. And the mask fogs up my glasses and it's painful and it's just, you know, it's, 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 but it is what it is. Listen, I'm not complaining. I, I've never liked wearing a mask, but that's what you got to do. I mean, you don't want to get sick. Luckily, knock wood, I have not gotten COVID. My whole entire family, except my, my eldest son, uh, got it. And they got it during Christmas, right? <laughs> during the holiday. Everybody that I know has gotten COVID. Uh, except for me and, and my son. So I'm just knocking it and hoping that, you know, we don't get it. But if we get it, then, you know, it'll be a cold and it'll be that and moving on. We have to keep living life. I mean, one of the things that I've certainly learned during this time is I am not stopping to live life for not for COVID and not for anybody. Yeah, absolutely true. We, we feel the same way. And this show is going to air on the 11th, and it will be one day prior to our mask mandate being lifted for indoors here in Washington State. So two years to the day that everything was shut down, and it's been a time of growth, and uh, we are glad to be coming out the other side with uh, a lot of wonderful new friends. Michelle, this has been great. We appreciate your time. The 
the joys of technology allowing us to connect with you in Los Angeles. So we we wish you uh, good luck with your projects, good health as well. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you for all the wonderful tips. Um, we're looking forward to our, our audiences uh, well here and, and all over and all, all levels of the acting world uh, learning from you. So Definitely. we've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Take care. Well, thank you again to our guest, L.A. acting coach, film and stage director and author, Michelle Danner. You can get more info about the Michelle Danner Acting Studio and their plentiful and varied class offerings at www.michelledanner.com and, of course, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all linked in our show notes. And if you enjoyed episode 58, please make sure to follow us and share the podcast with a friend. Tell them to check out our new website at highalmanandhaver.com and tune in on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Pandora. And you can keep up with all our latest on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and check out special segments like Get to Know Theater and In the Mix, and of course, artist interviews on our YouTube channel. As always, thank you for supporting your local theater and for joining us here on Heilman and Haver. 